The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. O'Brien. <clears throat> Good morning, Mon Good Monday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN. We kick things off with markets in positive territory. And how about we start with a chart of Bitcoin? Up $5,500 over the weekend. You look at the acceleration, right? You came into last Tuesday approaching 70000 Folks, we're up almost 20% from where we were last week. We're trading at 82,820. You pull it up on a five minute chart, you see the gap over the weekend, and we just hit 83,000 for the first time ever on Bitcoin, trading higher. You have Ethereum up about $200. You see the bid there. Now, Bitcoin getting a lot of attention. What is interesting is you take a look at Ethereum. Not even close to where we were on 2021. So Bitcoin. King of all crypto, 82,815. We go back to the markets. We got dramatic stocks trading higher. You got Tesla popping dramatically. They're getting upgrades all over the place. Still, you got the S&Ps up three tenths percent right now. We just hit 6,050. NASDAQ 100, we're up by 72 points, 21,303. Dow up 153, 44,294. And how about the Russell? Up by more than a percent to 2437. Crude, you gotta like that. How about a 68 handle at the pump? $68.70. I was at Target this weekend, and I bought an impulse item of a 20-ounce bottle of soda for $2.49. You know, I'm sitting there. I'm ready to check out at Target, getting a few essentials. A person uh, jumps in line very cordially, just grabs a soda out of the impulse refrigerator at the the register, they grab a Mountain Dew. You know what I say? I haven't had a Mountain Dew or even a diet Mountain Dew in forever. I've talked about it on the show. $2.49. And I mention it because then we come out of Target and gas is $3.01. And I'm talking to my mom and my sister and I'm saying there's no way that a gallon of gasoline with the utility value that it has should be what I'm paying for a 20 ounce bottle of sugar water in the store. And those should be a little bit different. And guess what? The price of the soda is not going down. So that means maybe the price of gas is going to be going up. But I digress. It's not going up today, man. We're down $4 from where we were on Thursday. You're at 68.65, and you, you take a longer-term chart of this crude, a, a longer-term look at this chart of crude. Maybe 67.50 is an area. That's where we've bounced before on three occasions. We did it in September. We did it at the end of September, the early part of October. And then we were back down there on October 29th, 6863. Now, we got some action in yields. We really got some action in the dollar, which is putting quite an acceleration on gold. We'll start it off with yields. Yields in the dollar are going to be everything, in my opinion, for the next few weeks or for a few months until this market really figures out where some of the economic policies my, may lie with this new administration. We have our tenure. We have lower price and higher yields this morning. Now, we've had quite a reverberation since the election. You put this on a 15-minute chart. As of Friday, we've gotten it all back. We're going to do it again. We might do it again, right? As of Friday morning, when I got off the air, we were at 110.18. We just traded a 109.26. We got it back almost to the tick, folks, of that trade from where we were prior to the election, that's about 6.45 p.m. Eastern Time, Tuesday night. Close, polls closed at 7. We started getting some of the results. The market reacted with lower price and higher yield. We took it all back. We're getting lower price and higher yield again this morning. We're above 4.3% right now in the tenure. All things, things considered, pretty reasonable, 4.3% with the volatility we've had. But I go over that because that's not the case with the dollar. Check out the dollar. You are now above where you were, okay? So the dollar started things off at 103.37 prior to the election. We got an initial pop. 
We got a pullback. We are now above the highs you had on Wednesday. You're talking about dollar strength coming at you, even with the tenure, just sitting at about 4.3%. And, yeah, you look at that daily. Okay, now, the 106 area, that's a natural area of resistance. We'll see how we react. We're at 105.53 right now in the dollar. You take even a little bit of a longer-term look, and you see, right? You don't have to be a master technician to put that line on your chart. It's been an area of resistance. It is going to be an area of resistance. Doesn't mean we can't get through it. But you're right about to approach it, and it seems like that's got to be the natural progression, right? We're probably going to get a 106. We'll see if we chop around for a bit. But remarkable dollar strength, even with the yields, not that much higher from where we were. Even for the election, the dollar gaining more strength than the yield is gaining in the tenure. And then anytime you get a move like that, it's going to be a tough one for gold. And it is a tough one right now. But all things considered, folks, it has been a heck of a rally. You've traded from 2000 up to 2800 in the span of the beginning of February to where we are. That's the gold contract. We put it back to a daily. All right, there's your pullback. Now, the 382 is situated about 2600 We're trading at 2637 Yeah, gold is down almost $175 from the highs that we set. When was it? October 29th? Coming into the 30th? Yeah, the 31st is when you had your first pullback, 2801. Our man Basil Chapman always talks about those round numbers, right? I mean, yeah, it didn't hit it to the penny, folks. It might as well have, though, when you're talking about 2801. You could have been waiting for that round number, and you could have given yourself $2 for a tight stop. And meanwhile, you're down $172 from where we were, $162, where we were at 2801. Remarkable. And yeah, if gold is catching a bid, and it is, excuse me, if the dollar is catching a bid, and it is, seems like 106 is the spot. And maybe when you get to 106, you're looking at a gold contract that gets you back to about 2600 So that's where they're probably heading right now. And we'll keep our eye on yields for sure. How about Tesla this morning? All the crypto stocks are obviously rocking. You have Tesla trading from 250 to 350, basically since the election. And I've gone over it, but you got to reiterate: you're talking about a company with 3.2 billion shares. Okay, we're popping a 343. You're talking about a company that has now added. A third of a trillion dollars in market cap since where we were prior to the election. That's a lot of billions to live up to. And you are talking about that now we're above a trillion. And we're well above it. We're at $1.1 trillion. Whew. Half the size of Google, Tesla. They got a lot to live up to, folks. I know I've been harping it. Listen, we closed our short before that election, all right? Yes, that was a big moment for Tesla, okay? I mean, to check out the articles, we'll jump around. We got one minute till we come into this first break. But these are not normal headlines that don't usually come. Not to this degree. We all know that wealthy people have an influence, but you have literally the next president-elect and then Elon weighing in on the Senate leader contest of who's going to run the Senate, okay? That is a remarkable amount of power that that... Twitter purchase and his endorsement and the money comes with. Now, Rick Scott, he's a whole different deal, okay? Um, but nonetheless, you are talking about a company that has now added about $300 billion in market cap from that election, folks. That is a lofty expectation. You're at $1.1 trillion. And yeah, nonetheless, we move on. All right, we'll talk some crypto stocks. We'll talk some other equities. We got a lot to talk about. It's Monday. First week following the election, we'll be right back, folks. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service 
that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This portion of the Morning Market Kickoff is brought to you by Direction's Daily Leveraged and Inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps right now up by 17 points, back to a short-term time frame. We hit 6,053, NASDAQ 100 up 61, the Dow up 175, Russell up 25. How about that dollar, right? Keep an eye on the dollar, 105.52, pulling back a bit, but well above the highs we had on Wednesday, even at the same time that we get the 10-year right now sitting at about 4.3%. So you can see that the 10-year Okay, got a full point lower almost. We're basically almost at 110 right now on the dot. You were chopping around at 109.07. Usually lower price and higher yield in the 10-year will translate to dollar strength. We now have the 10-year basically just where we were. Check it out. The 10-year is where we were on Tuesday morning. Okay, you got to keep your eye on these because... The dollar Tuesday morning was 103.73. So there are forces at work here with whatever the trade is materializing as, and it's gonna change when we get updates, okay? But the market right now is saying that even with the tenure, at a price point of where we were on Tuesday morning, you have the dollar almost two full points higher. So don't expect that you need that push up in yields, we'll see if we get it, to get dollar strength, because we've gotten it without that already. All right, we got a great question in the Tiger's Den. Let's talk a little ABCs. And yeah, that's a good one. <clears throat> the question is, um, looking at an ABC up in the SPY, and it's a longer-term one from the COVID lows, all right? Now, let's go over the SPY. But look, so check it out. The, the beautiful thing is, this was already on the chart. This was already on the chart that I had. Now, we'll look at this SPY. But if you're looking at Tiger TV, all right, we've had this up. 
And yes, it's very legitimate. In the S&P, the futures, you're talking about 6136. We'll take a look at the SPY, but there's a clear as A. The A to B leg, 2,634 points. You start at the COVID lows, you make it up to the B point, the highs at the end of 2021. Now, what's so cool as well, okay, right to the 50% line, and boom, you take off again. Well, what is 2,634 plus 3,502? 61.36, right? We're right up to that level. So we are completing an area in the S&P. Now, you take a look at the SPY, okay? That translates to the SPY for this S&P, uh, excuse me, this S&P, this A, B, A to B, C to D formation. Your A point down there at about 218, your B point up here at about 488. Is that what we're looking at? Yeah, 480, you got it. C point at 348 or so. And yeah, that's bringing us just above where we are right now. What's it tell me here? 612 or so. We are close to that level. And it is remarkable when you think that it starts at an area of 218. And here we are, almost three times the value of that. Now, you're cherry picking the COVID lows, but that's how they work sometimes. So, yeah, I'd be very aware that we're bumping up against an area. This market, I mean, that's kind of what I'm talking about on Tesla, right? Tesla's in a great spot since the election. Their CEO <clears throat> is now mentioned in headlines with the incoming president about who's going to pick the Senate uh, leader. Who's going to imagine that, right? The CEO of Tesla is now mentioned hand in hand with the incoming president when they talk about who they want to run the Senate. That is a powerful, powerful proposition that he is now in. And the market has reacted accordingly by rewarding Tesla with over $300 billion in market cap. The point being, Maybe the S&P is going to get that lift, okay? And maybe we're going to chop around a bit and see if the optimism priced into these markets is going to be delivered by reality versus rhetoric, by something that's going to pay off to a third of a trillion dollars, which is now priced into Tesla, okay? You know, not that long ago, folks, August 5th, three months ago, this market's up 20% from where we were three months ago. You take the high before we pulled back there. What do we have, an extra 5 or 6% since July? And that's after we went from 4,800 to almost 5,700. Remarkable advances this year. There's a lot of optimism priced in. And at some level, at some level, do we need a consolidation to some degree? There's been, you know, the consolidation here was only took place on the most aggressive hiking cycle that we've seen in a long time in the Fed. And all you did is you pulled back and then you got it all back within two years and then kaboom, you're 25% higher within the next year, just like that. After that historic run during COVID up to almost 5,000. There's a lot of optimism. Tesla has a long way to go. Even with Elon having his you know, voice right in the president's ear, there's a lot of value built into these equities across the board. And yeah, so that's, you know, it ties in well when you have literally Trump and Musk weigh in on Senate leader. I mean, folks, he's not on par with the next president. OK, he's got a lot of influence, but it's remarkable. I mean, how does how does Trump feel about that? I, I, I imagine he wants himself in the headlines and not Elon side by side. But anyway, Rick Scott. I hope Rick Scott does not become leader of the Senate, folks, regardless of what it says over here. And they're talking about um, recess appointments. OK, regardless. This guy ran HCA. They paid one point seven billion dollars in fraud. He walked away worth hundreds of millions of dollars and he pled the fifth 75 times on the stand. Uh, it's remarkable to find him as the person that's the savior in the Trump administration running the Senate. But nonetheless, that's where we find ourselves today for Mr. Rick Scott. All right, where are we going next? Oh, let's talk a little bit about the Fed. Because again, Elon at the headlines. Now, he's going to be there, man. Okay, that's the case. And I would love to hear even the discourse of how this works, okay? Because Trump is going to want lower interest rates. Trump is a real estate man. Trump has debt, okay? He wants lower interest rates for his own personal businesses, which he is still running. What I don't understand is, is that there are inflationary factors in play, and we do not want the president picking the interest rate policies, folks. 
I don't understand how this one plays out. And, you know, here's Elon saying the executive branch with Mr. Mike Lee. All right, of course, a powerful politician. I don't understand how it had, ends up there. Right? How does it end up there? As in, there are inflationary forces in play. When you talk about tax cuts not paid for and you talk about tariffs, if those come into fruition, I don't understand because there's a very real risk that if interest rates are forced lower, I don't understand how it's going to play out. But we're going to get to see it play out in real time and have your spikes up because if we ever have policies – and this is where you want to you want to plan for a range of outcomes. OK, one of those range of outcomes is we have policies that could be inflationary. Doesn't mean it's going to hurt the market. Market seems to be fine what's going on, but they could be inflationary tariffs, taxes. And then you have pressure to keep interest rates low or even the president himself having an influence there. That's the recipe for runaway inflation. OK. Nonetheless, we're coming back for the opening bell. We got markets at record territory with the S&Ps at 6,041. We'll talk a little bit of technology stocks. We'll take a look at some of those magnificent seven, some other equities moving. And yeah, we're going to take another look at Bitcoin. We'll be right back, folks. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels. You'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns. You'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry October 11th and 25th for more live trading action. Your purchase goes towards two sessions, so make sure to sign up now so you don't miss a chance to sit next to Larry as he trades the market live. For all information and to reserve your spot today, go to the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got markets open. Up. Green across the board, S&P's up three-tenths percent, up 18 points right now. NASDAQ 100, we're up by about three-tenths percent as well. 
21,286. You get the Dow up 233. Now, what's interesting here is, right, we were talking about the A to B, C to D, and a great question, because it's there. Now, you know what else is there, which is interesting, that we were looking at, is it's similar across the board here, okay, because all the markets had a pullback to lows during COVID, an acceleration highs, a pullback during the Federal Reserve hiking, and then a second acceleration. Well, what's remarkable is, okay, We've already eclipsed that level in the NASDAQ 100, and we did chop around there for a period of four to five months. We actually got there in June, 20,623. We're, what, six, 700 points higher, and that's right where we were coming out of the election. So, boy, you know, is this going to bring us to the 1 to 1.618 expansion in the NASDAQ 100, right? And then in the Dow, I'm going to take these off real quickly. All right, I'm going to remove that. It is remarkable before I do it, actually. How about that during COVID, the Dow pulled back to where we were in 2014, right? Just like that. Let's pull that back, though. And yeah, so you take a look at the Dow. You're talking about 47,346. Now, it makes sense, right, in terms of. What was the strongest? NASDAQ 100, those growth stocks accelerating. S&P just behind it. Then you have the Dow, and then you have the Russell, which is a whole different story because the Russell technically hasn't even hit its B point yet, right? If you were ever to get that formation in the Russell, then you would be talking about... the Russell needing to trade up to 3152. It just shows you how the NASDAQ has already completed its formation. The S&Ps, a stone's throw away. The Dow, maybe 3,000 points. And if the Russell ever traded up there, you're talking about another 25% or so from where we are right now. Almost 30% from where you are right now. We'll see where we go. We'll see how that dollar weighs, right? Because you think about it, Trump's also not going to want a strong dollar. We know this. He's been in office and he said that before. Okay? Now, I think we should want a strong dollar. If you want to think longer term, folks, I want a strong dollar for my children. I don't want, you know, a weak dollar to make sure everybody else can buy stuff from America because we have a weak dollar today. I want to make sure we have a strong dollar in the future for future generations. And we'll see where that goes. We're bumping up to 106. Nonetheless, today you get the dollar at 105.52. And yeah, we got to talk a little bit of Bitcoin. All right. Now, we'll back it up on the monthly. Do you remember when Bitcoin, I can't believe it's 2017, man. Do you remember when Bitcoin went live on futures? Do you remember it was the first time it was shortable on a regulated exchange? Welcome to seven years ago, folks. I remember it like it was yesterday. Uh, it seemed like, in hindsight, one of the easiest trades ever, right? You got this euphoric run-up to Bitcoin trading on the futures in a regulated exchange. And, of course, it trades from 20000 down to 3000 But, boy, that was the buy. And, boy, was it. You trade up to 70000 You pull back. Now, I'm going to remove a couple of these, Okay. It's tough to find technical formations when, yeah, you know, you had a nice double top in 2021. That was a nice one for sure. I forget where Coinbase went public. It was one of those highs. I think it was maybe in November. Let's see, because Coinbase is up a lot today. Also, not a coincidence, Coinbase goes public in April of 2021. Okay, so it was the first high. There's April 2021. Not a coincidence. Coinbase goes public. You pull back. You double top. And then we get the pullback to a low of what? 15,000? 14,925. Now, if you want to try and find one, okay, this would be the one. First of all, on the Fibonacci level, you pull back. Touch the 382 on Bitcoin. And if you want to see where we could potentially go. hundred and nine thousand. Don't think it's out of the question. We were just trading at 15,000. We're at 83,000. We only got to get to 108 on a percentage basis. Not that surprising at all from what we've been doing recently in terms of the moves that we've had.
And the market's holding on to these gains. Dow getting a little bit of a bid right now, but we got everything in the in the green right now. And we got crude at 68.59. And let's jump around to some of the magnificent 70. You got Amazon shares up about a half a percent. We jump over to the big dog Apple. Ooh, watch out, Apple down 1.4 percent. What's going on with Apple this morning? They get a little downgrade somewhere. Something's going on. Okay, we jump over to Microsoft shares, slightly in the positive. Google shares this morning up by six tenths. We mentioned Tesla up by another $24 at $345 with a market cap now exceeding $1 trillion. We jump over to NVIDIA shares, even holding on to these gains, right? 147.41. We were just at 135 less than a week ago. And we were just trading at, what was that August 5th pullback? 90. Look at that, man. You're up $60 on a $90 stock. You're up almost 70% from NVIDIA. And this is where, folks, technicals, and I didn't buy it. Okay, I didn't buy it because, man, that rotation trade out of the end, everything going on there. That was a, a dicey Monday morning, right? That August 5th when we came back and everybody was unrolling the yen trade. The markets were down, limit down. But look at that nice area it was coming into, right? You're coming into the areas from the highs of March, the highs of the end of March. You chopped around, you pulled back, but this whole little area, you touch it and you take off to the upside. Nonetheless, NVIDIA flat today, but still pushing almost $150. Remarkable. <clears throat> yeah, we got Meta and we got Microsoft lower this morning. Meta, this is where, you know, you want to pay, <clears throat> you want to pay attention to what's happening with these equities. from that Trump trade. You want to. Now, Zuckerberg, Facebook, not exactly friends of the new administration, right? Amazon shares, they do get a nice pop up to 208.86. Apple, not sure what they're dealing with this morning, but yeah, not the same deal as well. I mean, Apple is trading below where it's been trading at on many occasions. <coughs> Excuse me. Meanwhile, we have stocks at record territory across the board. And we take a look at gold. Seems like gold is going to chop back down to the $2,600 area, folks. I think the dollar index is pushing 106. Gold pulling back to 2600 And then we'll see how we react at those levels. Some nice round numbers. Gold off $66 or 2.5% right now. You jump over to the XAU. XAU. We talked about these. There go the trading ranges, the channels. XAU. They gap away, man, to 150 Not what you want to see. Because the XAU and the HUI, look at that break, right? Almost really didn't even give us a chance. You could say maybe it gave us a slight chance. There was your breakaway. There was your test. Intraday, you could have said you got it. But boy, it was a quick one. And today, kaboom. Just like that. Look at that test, though. And you got gold. 26.28. Markets in positive territory. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. 
And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening Call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We got markets holding on to the gains right now. S&P's plus 18. We got the NASDAQ 100 up by 14 right now. Dow, how about it? Surging higher up by 429 right now. 44,564. Seems like 45,000. It's hanging out there. Get your hats ready. We were just at 41,000 November 4th. And right now, we're at 44,000. You talk about percentage-wise, and how about the Russell as well? I think the trends are defining themselves a bit right now. You jump over to the dollar index, DXY. That's an hourly chart on a five-minute. Yeah, we had quite a little pullback, but I say quite. We had a little pullback, and then you jump over to the 10-year keeping. Yeah, 10-year sitting at about 4.3%. So happy Veterans Day to all the veterans out there. Thank you for your service. Uh, my dad had a great service on Saturday morning, I just got a little picture of the ceremony altar up there. I appreciate those that came out, and I just wanted to share, because I know a lot of people did want to make it not easy traveling. I totally get it in terms of we got listeners all over the place. But what was always beautiful is my dad's birthday was on November 9th, which is when we had his funeral service ceremony, and he would have been 74 on that day. And he always loved it because he had his birthday November 9th, the Marine Corps' birthday, November 10th, and Veterans Day, November 11th. And uh, it was a beautiful ceremony, folks. We had the Marine Corps Honor Guard there. They played taps. Very emotional, of course, but beautiful. As I said, I appreciate everybody coming out. And, yeah, thank you to all who served or serve uh, for your service to this country. Because seeing that, even seeing those Marines there, um, seeing that Bay Pines National Cemetery and the beauty and all those people that served, thank you for your service on Veterans Day. And with that in mind, it's kind of like a half holiday today, right? Markets open, but there is this, you know, softness that could be in play here with Veterans Day being a holiday, rightfully, show, rightfully so, but meanwhile, the markets are open. And, you know, you think about it, and I was thinking about it even this weekend, right? Of all the holidays, the markets are open. Veterans Day, really? I feel like that's... Uh, that's one that we should respect like the most. Happy birthday, Darth. Gotta love it, man. Veterans Day. Yeah, that was always a great weekend of uh, quite the party. Birthday month, birthday weekend, birthday, Marine Corps, and then Veterans Day. My dad going into the Marines at 17. It's 1967. He was born in 1950, into the Marines, 1967. He was only 17 years old. His mother God bless her soul, had to sign that form because he was 17 and technically a minor, signing up for the Marines at 17 years old. Um, 
speaks to who my dad was from early on, as uh, as I said, this weekend and as it will be. But it was a beautiful day, and it was a beautiful spot, and I appreciate everybody coming out. And happy Veterans Day to all you veterans, man, because that's what it's all about for sure. All right, let's jump around to some equities. We jump over to Tesla. We're up to 350. Speaking of raw numbers, our man Basil Chapman coming up next. We're back to 342. On Tesla, you're still up by almost 7%. Remarkable. And speaking of our man Basil, coming up Thursday, folks, 90-minute webinar. It's such a great time to check out the opening call. Go in there right now. Sign up for the opening call. It comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. And, folks, please try it out. If it's not up your alley, you don't think you're going to keep it, cancel it. You get a 30-day money-back guarantee. Your money back. You get the newsletter for 30 days. You get Basil's 90-minute webinar coming up on Thursday night from 4 till 5.30. Sectors and stocks for the next market phase. Sector rotation should continue as new groups rally. It's kind of what I'm talking about, right? Pay attention to what's happening here. Who's going to benefit from the coming administration and the changes potentially in play? Who is not going to benefit, right? We saw, I mean, this is short term, but yeah, you got a stock like Tesla that's added almost $400 billion in market cap since the election, and you have a stock like Meta that's faced a little bit of two-way action, right? Pay attention to some of those that are succeeding right now. And Basil's going to be talking about sectors and stocks for the next market phase. Folks, check it out, $149 a month. If you're going to sign up, you think you're going to keep it for six months a year, but check it out, $149 a month. Comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee, and Basil will be in there Thursday night for 90 minutes and taking questions live, going over the Chapman Wave technical tools of importance, and the 914 moving average. If you've never went over it with Basil, folks, if you don't understand it, that is probably worth the subscription price alone, let alone the newsletter and what you get outside of it, because we know those critical areas, right? Listen, the market is just, you know, the harmonic movements of, of all of us together to a certain degree. Right. And so that's why, you know, it's not like some magic number. It is just human emotions at play. Fear, greed, all of that stuff on the biggest stage out there, which is why I think some of that stuff plays in. All right. A couple of the stories that caught my eye this morning. I just closed one on the journal by accident before taking a peek. But how about this one? Because you know what I thought to myself? They're right. I've seen that shoe section at Macy's. Say that one five times fast. Shoe section at Macy's. And I don't want to call it intimidating because usually I'm not intimidated by shopping for shoes, but it's not ideal. It's not fun, right? They're everywhere. You got to grab whatever it is. But nonetheless, so I found it interesting that, yeah, they're trying to mix everything up. They're trying to change it. Fewer styles on shelves and using technology to get shoes out of the stock room faster. That's the thing. You got to find somebody. Even going to a place like uh, Dick's Sporting Goods where they have their sneaker section, I like shopping online. Isn't that a trip? And if you can return it, why not? But display tables at some stores now showcase about 15 pairs of shoes, half of what was previously viewed. Yeah, 300 fewer styles and colors than before. So they're trimming the ship. It's too big. It's too intimidating. There's too much going on. There's shoes everywhere. What do I do? It's going to be amazing if AI even revolutionizes this, okay? And it's totally in play. Yeah, they're going to shrink their floor plan, and they're going to do it in a more manageable way. They're going to close stores as well, but they're going to shrink that floor plan, man. It is very difficult to pay for the amount of rent that they're paying for in there when people just enjoy shopping online. But you can see how they're going to have to do different things when it comes to rethinking the entire experience, which is what I found interesting there. Now, jumping back to the market. <laughs> Nobody knows the answer to this, folks, but just keep it in mind. Warren Buffett's got a lot of cash. He must be thinking something. Whether he knows something, we'll find out. But he's thinking something because if he had thought that this market was at the next phase of the next big bull, he wouldn't have all that money in cash. Okay, it doesn't mean he's right, but his spikes are up. Your spikes should probably be up too. He's got a record out there for the cash that he's dealing with, and you better be paying attention. $325 billion, okay? Now, that's only what... Tesla just popped in the last week is another way to write that number. But that's all cash. Yeah. Yeah, that would allow Berkshire to write a check for all but the 25 or so most valuable listed U.S. corporations. He could buy any company out there besides the biggest 25 on that number. Okay. 
but he doesn't. He's not. He's not even close. He's actually selling a lot of his positions. That's where the cash is going, right? And what's remarkable is he's he's waiting for the pullback, man. That's what he's waiting for. That's what he's thinking. Because he started this when you relatively came into the highs. To back it up here. He was selling here, folks. With the market at 4,500, he was loading up on some cash. So he's really loading up cash at 6,000. We'll finish this conversation up. Stay tuned. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. I have an hourly chart here of the NASDAQ 100, but you can see a little bit of a rollover. NASDAQ 100 grows red at a time when we got the Dow up a full percentage point and the Russell up by about 1.2. The NASDAQ 100, we're now about 150 points off of the highs of 21,340. I put it back to a 15-minute chart, and you can see the sell-off right there at highs at 8 o'clock in the morning. Meanwhile, we've got the Dow basically sitting at highs to the tick we explode higher on the open there and the Russell pretty similar now it would be interesting as we went over those A to B C D formations coming off the COVID lows to the 2022 highs to the pullback for the hiking cycle what happened the NASDAQ 100 was the strongest one the S&P's were second 
Then you had Dow, then you had Russell. It's an exact reversal going on right now. Russell's the strongest. Dow is second. S&P is third. And the NASDAQ is actually negative. For the longest time, it was the other way around. The NASDAQ 100 was the power horse. The Magnificent 7 was doing everything, even for the S&P 500. There were many days, though, where we had huge rallies in those Magnificent 7 at a time when we had the Russell even negative. And now what do we have going on? The exact reversal of what's in play. The Russell leading the way with the Dow. And then you have the NASDAQ 100 in negative territory. S&P holding on to gains. But yes, we'll see how it plays out in terms of the dollar as we are pushing 105.66 right now in the dollar. And look for 2600 in gold. 2628 is the price point right now in gold. We're off by 2.4% in that gold contract. And you know what? The other one, I'm going to post this one in the den. All right, because I was going to talk about this, and it's an interesting one because it's happening, man. Streaming wars. Figure out who's going to allow less people to cancel, and you'll be the winner. That's why live is coming everywhere, man. Amazon, they've had some great Thursday night games with their live. But, yes, everyone is going to start canceling and coming back. Look at Netflix, though. Up another $5 right now. Amazon shares. Negative with the NASDAQ 100. Negative by almost a full percentage point right now. And how about Apple, right? Off 1.6%. Folks, Basil's coming up next. Check out his webinar. Go check out the opening call on the front page of TFNN. We'll see you tomorrow, folks. Have a great